Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of The Weapons of H3VR and today we're taking a look at a Cold War classic, the G3. So, uh, the history of the G3 will, will begin there. It begins in World War II with, of course, the Germans. This is a German rifle and I can't remember names, so uh, apologies for that. But they were, of course, working on the Sturmgewehr during World War II. Well, they also, at some, some due to lots of infighting, yada yada, they were also guys developing the Sturmgewehr 45 or at the uh, Gerat 06H. I believe Ian from Forgotten Weapons has a video on it. And that was a roller delayed blowback system because, well, it was a simplified, it was planned to go into mass production, I believe, to replace the Sturmgewehr 44 because it was a lot cheaper to produce, but it never happened. And then peace broke out. So what did the, the designers do? Well, first they worked for the French, got some prototype weapons, and then later they do moved to Italy, Italy, I mean Spain, where they would work at the uh, state-owned arsenal, SETMI, and create uh, the SETMI rifle. Now, if we fast forward to the 50s, the Germans are looking for a battle rifle. Uh, we have this entire ordeal. Uh, let's get this. 762 NATO adopted because uh, the Americans were being bitches, frankly. Uh, the British, the Belgians, they, um, they adopted the FAL, which we will look at uh, or have looked at. Um, well, the Germans, they were interested in the SETMI. But they were also interested in the FEL, and if I have my history correct, in fact, they adopted the FEL, kind of. Except they wanted one thing. To adopt it, they wanted one simple thing. They wanted to produce it. FN, considering they're Belgian, in the last 50 years they've been invited, invaded twice by the British, they were like, eh, yeah, we'd rather not. So instead, they went to set me. And uh, Heckler and Koch were at some point founded, I don't know the specifics, and uh, they license some sort of licensing, licensing deal was uh, agreed to, and the G3 got put into development and adopted in the 50s by the German army. And of course it ended up getting adopted by multiple countries, and... Uh, it's a rather significant production, after all. Germany, not a small country. West Germany at the time. So, like, let's go to the rifle itself. Like I mentioned, 7.62 NATO is the round. This little stout cartridge, basically uh, like 30 out 6 or similar to 30 out 6 I believe this has a 20 round straight magazine. Paddle lock release. It's lower the blower. No, not blower. It is roller delayed blowback, like I mentioned. It has uh, typical HK iron sights, which includes uh, this itsy weeny sight, which is uh, useless unless you have a higher resolution headset. Another example, still itsy weeny sight. Still itsy weeny. That's the one we're going to use for simplicity's sake. It has a safe fire and auto, I believe. It does not have anything fancy like foldable stock. It does not have any rails or anything. It is the proper Cold War variant. And it also has the HK style charging handle, which uh, you can lock up. So a proper charging procedure. We're getting a stack of magazines there. So uh, let's put this on full giggle and empty this first. It does not lock, on, lock open on empty, as you can see. So proper loading procedure, and this goes for the MP5 as well, is you pull this back and lock it open. Oops. Lock it open. As you can see, it's locked open. You pull out the magazine. You get a new magazine. Simply slap that close, and you're back in business. Same procedure on the MP5. Because uh, that make, just makes it easier to load the magazine into the gun. Uh, 
And you can say what you want, the HK slap is fun. Anyways, we've had some fun with full giggle. Let's see how accurate we can do with this thing, I believe. 20 round magazines is what I said. Let's see if that's correct. Simple charge. One thing which is a bit weird though is having the charging handle so far back. Like you're used to having it like around here or here on most guns, a lot shorter. Here you kind of have to eh all the way up. So let's uh, aim. Twenty rounds, like I said, decent uh, array. One thing to note about this is this does not have tactical reload. You might think so with the paddle lock, but you can barely get the magazine up here even. So, no tactical reloads on this thing. I also have to say I don't know what it is about the G3, but it, I, I like it. It's I honestly don't know. I, I just I just like this rifle, which is weird. And of course, in full auto, it's not that controllable. L let's do a proper full auto on target. It's 7.62 NATO, so it shouldn't be that controllable in full auto. Hey, we got everything on target. Yeah, it's not controllable full auto. 7.62 NATO is just too heavy a hitter off a cartridge for full auto. But sh this short was the G3. I recommend you watch uh, Forgotten Weapons videos on it. I believe he has a few weapons videos on it, including one semi auto in use, left handed, specifically made for him. Definitely recommend you check that out. It's fun to watch. All praise God Jesus. And uh, be sure to vote for the next gun you want to see in the gun poll in the description below leave a like subscribe and all of that and i'll catch you guys in the next one bye